Hey guys, so um, before I start the um, week one recap videos, I would like to point out that at the time of recording the um, Dwebble and Steelix match was not uploaded. Um, this was supposed to be uploaded a few days ago, but something uh, happened with my laptop and it didn't get uploaded on the day it was originally planned to. And it's um, pretty much really, really late. <laughs> But, um, here it is. Hey guys, it's RJ the Awesome here with our week one, uh, weekly recap video. Um, week one was quite, quite an amazing week. Like, there was some upsets, there were some, uh, great plays, there were some questionable plays. Um, so how about we go ahead and move on to our first match. So, um, with this match, um, unfortunately, young J-Specs was no match for Mass. Um, J-Specs had, um, something to do in Massachusetts, and, um, unfortunately, he did not make it to his match. Hopefully, um, he will do better next, uh, when he comes back from the dead next week. Um, but right now, Lucky and the Dallas Manectrix win that match with a, uh, clean 3-0. And, um... Another thing I want to point out is um, at the time of this recording, um, I don't know if by the time you're watching this, you've already seen this match or anything, but um, by the time it's recorded, um, the Dwebble match and the Steelix match have not has not been put out, so I can't really I can't say anything about this because I haven't um, seen like their commentary on it or anything. But um, from the looks of what happened it looks like Gardevoir just kind of um wore down things when it could um and that Infernape and Lando just kind of did some damage to stuff um that's really all I can say um hopefully these uh from the next weeks there won't be problems like it wasn't their fault it was um Tec technical difficulties and they just weren't able to upload in time but um hopefully this is the uh first and last time this happens so moving on to uh one of the actual matches um we see kingdra plays games coach of the kansas city kingdras took on phantom base coach of the Cle cleveland escavaliers and whew, this match was something else um Right off the bat, Kingdra kind of throws Phantom Base off just from the just from the team that he brought. Like Tyler didn't expect him to bring certain Mons, and um, he he brought them. And um, right off the bat, we see a uh, Choice Scar Ford and Frost, which is something a a bit questionable. Like not not that it was a bad idea. It's just that he revealed the Choice Scarf really really early. Um, and I feel like that was kind of unnecessary. Um, he could have, um, he could have, like, probably tried to take advantage of it later on. Uh, I feel that the, uh, choice lead wasn't the smartest thing. But, um, I'm sure he had some, uh, great idea, um, in his head. Uh, then... Um, Tyler does a good job at kind of bluffing the fact that he doesn't have heal bell when the when in all react actuality he does when uh, kind of toxic war starts off between the Vaporeon and the Avalug, um, and which speaking of Avalug, uh, Tyler did an amazing job at just using Avalug to the greatest of potentials like. Um, I'll admit, when I first saw Tyler's team, I'm like, "Why did he draft Avalug? That what that he that thing's not going to do anything." And wow, Tyler just proved me wrong. Phantom Base, just wow. Um, in which it was, it got to the point to where it was pretty much Cincino versus the world. Um, in which unfortunately Cincino just couldn't couldn't pick it up and. There was a 3-0 loss in f favor of Phantom Base and the Cleveland Escavaliers.
And uh, next up, we have Dr. V, coach of the Colorado Rapidash, and Misty, coach of the Misty Drapions. And um, this was a interesting, to say the least. Um, right off the bat, we see uh, Gudra and Seismitoad. Um, and honestly, I think V kind of let Seismitoad die off kind of early there. Um, and then right afterwards, he goes into Togekiss and kind of hopes for the, uh, air slash flinches, but doesn't get any, and Gudra's just destroying everything right now. Um, and then after his Togekiss goes down, he, uh, goes into Mega Steelix, to try to set up the sand and go for a Mega Steelix sweep. However, his opponent had a Gliscor in the back, and Gliscor was able to come in and end Mega Steelix there. But um, I will I will give V one thing. He saw his win condition being Weavile, and uh, did a really 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 good job of keeping that thing alive for the most part and just destroying the rest of um, Misty's Mons that he could uh, hit. Um, there was a part of the game where, uh, instead of using knockoff, which he would have gotten extra damage, he went for the icicle crash, and I don't know if that would have killed. Um, if so, then Delphox would have died to a knockoff, so this was a really close match. Um, but in the end, Misty was able to overcome, uh, V with a really close 2-0 victory. So for the third match of the week, we had the Sydney Crocodiles up against the Tampa Bay Frogadiers, and everyone's favorite Jabroni Verd came over and um, really just worked around all of Sharpino's threats. Um, Grand Bull just did so much work. Um, I know it; he doesn't have any kills there, but Grand Bull put in so much work. Um, I don't. I don't think Tyrantrum and Heliolisk hit the uh, floor. Um, Stormy was able to get um, one one kill after. Um, I believe one, the Mon was already weak, and I may be wrong at this. And then <laughs> Embor. Oh my gosh, Embor flare blitzes a Sableye into oblivion. And then uh, proceeds to take out Cryogonal if, as if it's nothing as well. But the real MVP of this entire match was Spirit Tomb. Uh, just, it was amazing. Verd used Spirit Tomb really, really good. Um, but while it's kind of sounding one sided, it wasn't one sided at all. Um, right off the bat, Sharpino throws Verd off with a defiant Perugly. And, um,. Just, oh, sorry. Sorry if you can hear that, guys. I guess there's traffic going on. I don't know. But, um, <clears throat> Sharpino, uh, really had Verd on the ropes for a little while there. And then, um, Verd started to slowly take over. And, um, it just kind of went downhill for Sharpino. Um, I'm really looking forward to see how he, uh, uses this. Like, I know it sounds weird, but kind of, like, use this to his advantage and, um, like, see see his mistakes and try to, uh, go forward because that's something I, I kind of noticed during his, um, one thing that he was seeing, um, that he, he missed this. He should have done this and, I don't know, hopefully, hopefully he can learn from his mistakes and, um, start to do a lot of winning. Now on to the final match and quite possibly the most complicated match to explain um the Chicago Sacred Fire coached by Stab and Trev as his assistant coach who was playing this match um up against the Chicago Cub Chews um who was coached by Yuma and this match was uh, a bit haxy. Um, right off the bat, Houndoom, not right off the bat, but like, I don't know, like, Houndoom gets, gets a crit on Rhianoclus, and it just, 
like Rionicles probably couldn't have done much to hound him back, but that kind of destroys Rionicles there. Um, and then afterwards, like toward towards the very end, um, Shaman goes for the seed flare, but misses. And then Stab gets a high roll, I believe, is what happened, and proceeds to win the game. When um, if Yuma would have hit the seed flare, it would have come down to a roll as to whether or not he could have won. Um, really, really close match. Uh, probably the closest of the entire week. Um, like, there was just so many uh, predicaments that just kind of happened that really just changed the entire outcome of the of, of the match. So it's really kind of hard to explain. Um, like, I don't think anyone made necessarily any bad plays. There are a few interesting ones. For example, um, Healing Wish Mesprit to um, heal up the Manaphy, who had previously tried to go for a Tail Glow sweep, but uh, obviously didn't get it. As you can see, it has no kills. Um, in which, for a second time, Manaphy doesn't um, really get anything. But... Um, not no none of the plays were exactly bad. Um, like it was it was a really good match. I don't know. I'm I'm really bad at explaining these things, guys. I'm I'm sorry about that. But uh, let's go ahead and move on to our league leaders. Starting off, I'm gonna go ahead and go from the bottom to the top. Uh, we have a giant tie from for our top ten, number eight through number twelve, with Cincino from the Kansas City Kingdras. Houndoom from the Chicago Sacred Fire, Landorus T from the Pittsburgh Steelix, Shaman from uh, the Chicago Cub Chews, and Staraptor from the Misty Drapions, all with two kills, one death. And then uh, with another big tie for uh, spots four through seven, we have Electabuzz of the Chicago Sacred Fire, Embor of the Tampa Bay Frogadiers, Gengar of the Chicago Sacred Fire, and Victini of the Cleveland Escavaliers, all tied with two kills and zero deaths. Um, really showing, like, th that's three Mons on the Sacred Fire team, uh, showing that Stab really, really knows what he's doing. And our top three. At number three, we have Weavile of the Colorado Rapidash. Um, like I said... Uh, v knew V knew uh the one mon that he needed to win, um and he all he almost took it back, almost took it back and Weavile Weavile got a lot of kills through that with three kills and one death, and then we have a two way tie, uh Guard of War the Jersey Dwebbles and uh surprisingly Spirit Tomb of the Tampa Bay Frogadiers, um. Like I said, I didn't see the uh, Dwebble Steelix match because it hasn't been uploaded yet. But um, I'm going to guess that uh, Cloud really used Gardevoir uh, really well. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go on out on a limb here and say that Gardevoir kind of gave him the victory. Um, and then Spirit Tomb. Uh, Verd really just used Spirit Tomb really well and. I don't know, it's really interesting to see um, two mons that you wouldn't really see, like Mega Gardevoir, yeah, you'd be able, you'd, you could see that in the top 10, but regular Gardevoir and Spirit Tomb? Like, I don't know, there's just some uh, really crazy mons this time around. So now let's go ahead and look at and see how everyone is doing right now. Um, in the Magma Conference, in the Red Division, currently at the top is Phantom Base and the Cleveland Escavaliers. Um, with one win, zero losses, um, with a plus three differential. Um, close behind him is Yuma with uh, zero wins, one loss, with a negative two differential. And then um, Kingdor Plays Games is right behind him with zero wins, one loss, but a minus three differential. Um, right now, it, do it does look... Like Phantom Base has the advantage, but it's so so early you can't really can't really say anything. Um, also in the Magma Conference we have the Ruby Division, 
And leading the Ruby division right now, we have a tie between the Chicago Sacred Fire and the Jersey Devils, both with one win, zero losses, and a plus two differential. Um, and then bringing up the rear, we have the Pittsburgh Steelix with zero wins, one loss, and a minus two differential. Um, with how things look for playoffs with the Magma Conference, um, as of right now, again, it's way too early to assume anything, but it looks as if um, Stab or Cloud will take the Ruby division, um, and then uh, Phantom Base will take the Red division, and the one getting the um, middle buy will be either Stab or Cloud. Um, of course, it's super early, and any one of the other three can easily come back with one match. Um, so let's move on to the Aqua Conference, um, where Misty Drapions are uh, leading off with one win, zero losses, with a plus two differential. And then we have the Colorado Rapidash with zero wins, one loss, and a minus two differential. And bringing up the rear, we have the Hamden Hydreigons, zero wins, zero losses, but a, um, did not participate, or whatever DNP stands for, I'm pretty sure it's do not participate, uh, where, uh, because he couldn't make the battle and he had to forfeit. Um, with a minus three differential. And actually, with how things go, um, a DNP is worse than a loss. So um, hopefully, J Specs can um, come back from that. And then for the Sapphire Division, we have the Tampa Bay Frogadiers, one win, zero losses with a plus five differential. And the Dallas Panectric with one win, zero losses, and a plus three differential right behind them. And then bringing up the rear, we have the Sydney Crocodiles with zero wins, one loss, and a negative five differential. Um, how do playoffs look for the Aqua Conference? Um, it looks as if Verd is going to take the uh, bye, similar to how Phantom Base would have, because he's in the lead out of the conference. Um, with Misty taking the blue division, and then the uh, Dallas Manectrix or Lucky taking the uh second division second or the aqua conference second seat um once again it is way too early to be assuming anything and anyone can make a comeback anyone can be knocked off their pedestal um you're just gonna have to stay tuned and find out um anyways you guys stay awesome i know i will and i will see you next time